Hello all, my name is Alex Purdy, and I am so excited to bring you another Little Light Yoga session for teens. Teen yoga is all about expressing yourself, so make sure to take the poses at your own pace and make sure that you are just doing the poses in your own way. And whatever you come out with your practice is all right. The biggest thing that I want you to do is be able to shine here on your mat. So speaking of which, if you don't have a mat, you can always use a towel or the carpet. Just make sure whatever you're using, you're not slipping around. I am a certified yoga instructor, but because we're doing this virtually, it is a little bit hard for me to be able to modify to your own needs. So make sure that you're modifying poses or staying out and skipping poses if they do not feel right. If you at any time do not feel safe in your body or are feeling like you are about to injure yourself, stop. Um, I am. I cannot take responsibility for your body, only you can. So with that being said, let's have some fun. Let's shine our lights and let's get started in our first pose. So go ahead and kneel down at the back of your mat, toes touching, knees out wide. From there, take your forehead down to the ground and your arms out in front of you. Let's go ahead and take a couple breaths here. Inhale and exhale out of your mouth. Inhale in and exhale out. Take your fingers out wide and press them deep into your mat. Really feel how that mat feels beneath. Continue with your own breaths, inhale through your nose, and exhale out of your mouth. Now walking your hands slowly over to the right hand side of your mat, you can even reach off of your mat, keeping your hips where they are, reaching those backwards back to the back wall, just taking a nice little side stretch. And as we're here, I want you to go ahead and start setting an intention for the practice. What do you want to get out of today's practice? And as you do so, go ahead and walk your hands back to the middle of the mat and then take them over to the other side. And again, nice and easy and starting to name that intention for your practice. Like I said, teen yoga is all about expressing yourself. So what do you want to express to whether it be how you're feeling, whether it be just getting a little bit of a workout in, whatever it might be, start setting that intention. Then take your hands back to the center of the mat, and then we're gonna press up to a tabletop position. Press deep into your hands as you bring yourself up, your shoulders over your hands and your bottom over your knees. And as you're here in this tabletop position, make sure your back is flat. And then we'll go ahead and start taking some inhales and exhales with cat cow. So inhale, take your chest up, your belly down as you lift your head up for cow pose. And then an exhale for cat pose, you round your spine head down. And we'll continue that cow pose as you take your belly down to the ground. Inhale. And then on your exhale, the cat pose. And you're gonna keep on going that with your own paces. As you'll see, every upward, upward moving pose is always an inhale. And every downward moving pose is an exhale. So taking those nice and slow out and out. Let's go ahead and add in some other movement as you would like. You can take your spine side to side instead of moving up and down. You can step one foot back and the other just to get some hip stretching in. You can try to take your hands. So instead of having your fingers facing forward, they can face backwards. Just get a little stretch that way. You can do little circles with your spine. I always picture this as kind of like a jungle cat. take the time that you need to just to feel good in this practice. When you're ready, come onto your knees. 
facing forward. Let's go ahead and take our stop sign hands out in front of us. And then take one of your hands over top of the other and press your hand back so that your fingers are falling back towards your face. Try not to press too hard as we don't want to aggravate any of our joints. But we're just kind of getting a nice stretch. Then take your stop sign hand and place it upside down. And then again, take your other hand and press it back towards your body. As we do this, especially if you're someone that has been typing a lot, that homeschooling going on right now, um, this should feel really good. So let's go ahead and switch to our other stop sign hand. Again, pressing one of our hands back towards our face. And when you're ready, go ahead and flip that upside down and press it back. Go ahead and reach your arms out wide as we take our right hand over across our body, taking our left hand just to press it into our body more, getting that nice shoulder stretch. Go ahead and take your head and look the opposite direction. And when you're ready, reach your arms out wide again. And then let's take our other hand all the way over our body. Take your head back again, look in the opposite direction. Nice and easy stretching here. We don't want to overdo it this early in practice. Take your hands all the way up over top of you and then take your right hand down back along your back. Take your left hand and reach that elbow up closer towards the sky as we press in and get a little tricep stretch. Open your arms out again and then let's do it on your left side, El left elbow up, right hand there just to kind of give it a little bit more support. Maybe just a slight amount of pressure, but not overdoing. Good. When you're ready, go ahead and take your arms back down to the mat, coming into tabletop pose. Go ahead and tuck your toes, and we're gonna slowly lift our knees up, ever so slowly, coming into an upward, upside down facing B. Downward facing dog. When you get here to your downward facing dog, go ahead and walk out your legs. Making sure whenever we're in downward facing dog, we want to probably keep a really good bend in our knees just to keep that healthy bend. You can see me here just kind of wiggling around, taking my legs up, just kind of moving around and just kind of feeling my body in, in whatever I need to move to kind of feel good as we're starting practice. Downward dog, just like child's pose, is a really good place to start um, and a really good place just to rest if you ever feel like you're overwhelmed or, or getting a little bit too warm today in practice. You can always take one of these poses to get kind of Now I want you to take the tiniest of baby steps. Tiny, tiny, tiny steps all the way up to where your feet meet your hands. Coming into a first forward fold. Good. Keep a nice healthy bend in your knees in this first forward fold. And let's take a halfway lift, reaching our chest all the way forward to that front wall. And then coming back down into a forward fold. Now we're going to take our feet two fifths width distance apart. You can see me measuring it here. And then we're going to take a ragdoll pose. So there's a couple levels to this ragdoll pose. You can first take your elbows to your knees. Or if your back is feeling really good today, you can always just let your back lay over the front of your legs. Elbows holding on to each other. And then if you'd like, you can sway back and forth. In these forward folds, we want to make sure that our knees are always bent enough so that we can rest our top half on them. If we've got a really wide distance between our top of our legs and our top of our chest, that it means that we need to bend our knees even further. Good, and when you're ready, take your hands back down to the floor and come into another halfway lift, reaching that chest forward. Exhale, forward fold. And then inhale as you come all the way up into a mountain pose, arms overhead. Then coming with our prayer hands in front of our chest. Every time we do this, let's just recall our attention. And take your arms down to your side when you're ready. 
Now let's continue on. Let's do some half salutations. So for half salutations, we're going to go ahead and lift our hands all the way up to the sky. And then go ahead and take a forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, returning to that forward fold. Nice and slow. Go all the way up, reaching that chest forward and up. Back into that mountain pose. Then recalling that intention as we take our prayer hands. Let's go ahead and do that again. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward. Inhale, arms up, reach up. And exhale, hands to heart. We're going to do this one more time. This time I want you to take it at your own pace, taking your arms up, and then coming into a forward fold, then a halfway lift, forward fold again, and then hands all the way up. When you're in prayer hands, just wait for me to continue. Let's go ahead and take a back bend. You can go ahead and wiggle yourself out just a little bit, move yourself around before we get into this. Back bends are really good for waking ourselves up if we ever feel drowsy or just to build a little bit of heat. So take some, take your hands to the lower back, fingers pointing down, and then press your hips forward as you lift your chest up. Now in a backward bend, we wanna make sure that our chest is reaching more to the sky than we're bending back. We don't really care about bending back. It's a misnomer. I don't know why they named it a backward bend. We just want to make sure that our chest is reaching up. Then where your hands, keep your hands where they are as you forward fold all the way down and then halfway lift. Going back into that forward fold. Let's come back up into a mountain pose, arms up, reach up, and then prayer hands. We're going to do some sun salutations A. So we're just adding on to what we've already really done. So take your hands all the way up, inhale up, and forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, we're gonna plant our hands down on the ground and step back to a plank position. Now you've always got options, so you can take your knees down to the ground if you want to. I'll do that here just to kind of demonstrate. You're going to lean your body forward and then lower yourself all the way down to the ground, keeping your elbows in really close. Then for baby cobra, we're going to press our feet down to the ground deeply, but we're not going to press too hard into our hands as we lift our chest up, chest reaching forward. Then on an outhale, let's go ahead and lower ourselves back down. Again, lifting up. We're gonna inhale into that baby cobra, making sure not to press into those hands because we don't want to back bend too much here. Again, we just want to lift forward. When you're ready, lower back down. Now you can take a baby cobra again, or you can come and press deep into your hands for an upward facing dog, making sure to have equal pressure in your feet. Then roll yourself back to a downward facing dog. Press deep within your hands, making sure all 10 of your fingers are pointing forward. Walk it out if you need to. Here, let's do some heel lifts. So go ahead and lift your heels up, coming up onto your toes. And then on exhale, come back down. Let's do that again. Inhale in as you lift your heels up. And exhale back down. When you're ready, go ahead and take your feet, taking as many steps as you need to to get back up to your feet, meeting your hands. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up, reach up. And then hands back to a prayer. So we're gonna do the same sequence over again. So if you already know it, you can do it at your own pace. 
or if you'd like to follow me, let's go ahead and start off. Inhale your arms up. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step back to plank. Keep those abs engaged. Really hold yourself firm here as you lower yourself down to the ground. Now, I didn't use my knees this time. You're welcome to. As always, that's always an option to you. Give your body what it needs. Inhale, come into upward facing dog or cobra pose. Again, you get choices in this practice. This is a la carte. You take what you need. Then coming into downward facing dog. Bend your knees and walk yourself up to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up, reach up. And then take your prayer hands to your heart. Good, we're gonna keep on going and this time we're gonna add on to this sun salute. So go ahead and take a chair pose. Arms up, sitting your bottom back as far as you can go, like you're sitting into a chair. And then let's take a forward fold. Ooh, that chair always gives a lot of heat. Inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale, coming back to plank pose. Lean your body forward as you take yourself down to the ground. Upward facing dog or cobra. And then downward facing dog. Now, the way that we're gonna add on from here is we're gonna do a warrior one. So take your right foot forward and take your left heel back down to the floor. Keep your legs really wide. Make sure that front knee is bent as you lift your body up. Make sure that front knee is directly over your front ankle. Inhale, reach up even taller. As you exhale, come back down into that plank position. So flowing right away with this chaturanga. Again, take your knees. There's gonna be a lot of chaturangas today. Those little push-ups that we do. And when you're ready, inhale up to upward facing dog. And then finding your way into a downward facing dog. Let's go ahead and do that warrior one on the other side. So step that left heel forward in between your hands. Your back heel down as you lift yourself up. Now as you're up here, check to see that you can see your big toe. If not, move your knee out even further. And you can see me in the video kind of taking my hands down my hips to check to make sure that my hips are exactly in the same place. They're equal distance to that front wall. Good. When you're ready, inhale, keep your body up nice and long. And then exhale, take your hands down to the floor. Plank pose. Flowing through. Upward facing dog. and downward facing. Good. Continuing to move on, we're gonna go ahead and take our feet back to the top of the mat. Coming into that forward fold. As we inhale, take ourselves into a halfway lift. And then exhale, forward fold. And inhale, take a nice juicy inhale, breath in. Really feel that flow coming in as we take our hands back down to our heart. Checking in with our intention. Are we meeting our intention today? Let's do another sun salutation. Sitting our hips back in that chair pose. And then forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And let's take our hands down and do another flow through that chaturanga, upward facing dog. And when you're ready, meet me at downward facing dog. Good, this time we're gonna do the same thing, but this, let's go ahead and lift our leg up before we step our foot all the way forward into that warrior one position. 
This time we've been to Warrior 1 before, but we're going to use this as a transition to open up to the opposite side wall for a Warrior 2. So take your arms out wide, your legs out wide. And just hold firm here in this Warrior 2. Now let's go ahead and reach our front arm all the way up, our back arm down as we come into a peaceful warrior. Making sure to keep that front knee bent as we come back into a warrior too. Now let's go ahead and straighten that front leg and reach our body as far forward as we can for a triangle pose. Tick tock your arms to 6 and 12 o'clock so you're reaching your arms up and down. Try to reach those hips all the way back to the back wall. Keeping a nice firm stance through your feet, making sure not to let them wobble. Then look down as you come back into a warrior two position. And then here's my favorite part. You windmill your hands down, always feel kind of ninja-like, and come back into a plank pose. Flowing through, take your own pace, Again, let's focus on expressing ourselves. So doing whatever feels good here. When you're in your downward facing dog, take a second to take a deep breath in and then reach your other foot up, your left foot up to the sky and then step it between your hands. Coming into that warrior one for that transition, Make sure you're nice and tall, and then open yourself up. Here again, go ahead and check your knee and even take it out if you can't see your big toe. Try to keep nice and wide, loose through your shoulders. Go ahead and take a peaceful warrior as you draw your back arm down your back leg and reach your front arm up to the sky. Really imagining yourself as that warrior, maybe even holding a sword up above you. Then coming back into warrior two, go ahead and straighten that front leg. Reach your arms as far forward as they can go, and then take your arms up and down. Trying to keep some strong lines here from your front toe all the way back through your hips as if your hips were shooting all the way back to that back wall. And a strong line between your two arms from toe or from, <laughs> from middle finger all the way up to middle finger. Really stretch out wide. When you're ready, look down and then come back to warrior two, bending that front leg. Again, really feel this windmill as you come down and then take one final chaturanga. Those push-ups all the way down to the ground. At this point, I was getting really tired, so I took my knees down. And then coming into one final cobra pose. From here, go ahead and press yourself back into a child's pose where we started today's practice, just to kind of get ourselves in, back into our breath. Hips down to meet our heels, forehead down to the ground. Take a second here just to find peace. How does your body feel after doing all that warming up, all that movement? And then when you're ready, come into a tabletop pose as we transition into a, 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 a Puppy, uppy, puppy pose. This is one of my favorite poses. So go ahead and reach your arms out and walk them out as far as they can go. When you're ready, you can take your forehead to the ground, but keep those hips lifted up off of your heels. This is a really nice stretch for our shoulders. If you're wanting to go deeper, you can always take your chin down or your chest down. But just try not to overextend you. Especially if you you're a really flexible person. This can be this can be a challenging pose to make sure that you're not going too deep. This is what we call a heart opener. So you might feel 
your heartbeat, you might feel a little bit more open. It might feel like you're kind of getting winded. And that's okay. That's you just kind of opening yourself up, opening up your chest even further. So go ahead and take yourself into a tabletop position. Take your left hand directly underneath your face and lift your right hand up to the sky. When you're ready, go ahead and sew your arm through, right through the middle between your legs and your arm. Now let's go ahead and take that stretch here. You can take your shoulder down and your head down to the ground. Your left arm, you can reach that forward for a little bit more balance here. Now here, you can take the twist to your own degree. You can always take your body more underneath that forward arm, or you can just stay here. Whatever you do, just make sure that you're breathing, because that's what yoga is all about. When you're ready to come out of this, go ahead and take your left hand right next to your face as you press back up to a tabletop position. Before moving on to the other side, let's take a cat and a cow. Inhale and exhale. And then when you're ready, go ahead and take that right hand underneath your face as you lift your left hand up. Thread that left hand through that hole. And then find that balance. I always think when we're doing these kind of twists, every inhale should be lengthening our spine outward so we're not compressing into the spine. All those vertebrae kind of like come up against each other. So every inhale kind of lengthening that spine and exhale twisting farther if you want. ready and come back up to that tabletop position. Now let's press into our hands as we come into another downward facing dog, our last downward dog of the practice. Go ahead and walk your hands up, or walk your feet rather, up to meet your hands. And then inhale to a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, arms up, reach up. Taking your hands to a prayer position in front of your heart. We're going to move to a pose that's called intense side stretch. As it, the name suggests, it's going to be intense. It's always kind of fun to, to get a little stretch through your hips, especially if you're someone that's been sitting a lot with everything that's going on. So go ahead and take your, your feet out about a yard's length distance. And then we're gonna take our hands back behind us. We can either do reverse prayer hands. That's where we take prayer hands behind our back. We can take opposite elbows, or we can fist bump our hands back behind us. Whatever you do, go ahead and take those fists behind you and then inhale as you take your chicken wings back as you lift your chest up and then lean forward. Try to keep that back nice and straight. Now, a lot of people will try to take this forward fold and take it all the way down to the ground. That's really not the intention. You're gonna get a better stretch if you just keep yourself nice and long, even if that only means you go halfway down. Go ahead and lift yourself back up and let's take a 180 degree, degree turn. You can keep your hands where you are, but just rotate yourself back to face the other direction. Taking the intense side stretch on this other side. Whatever leg is forward, try to reach that hip back so that it's coming in line with your other hip just to get even more of a stretch. When you're ready, go ahead and lift yourself back up and then coming into a mountain facing the back wall. Inhale your arms up and then exhale forward fold into a toe stand. Coming in here, you can round yourself up here. 
I kind of lost balance. You can always kind of like just play with it, keeping your hands on the floor or trying to balance there. And when you're ready, open up your legs and find your way onto your back. You can always rock and roll to kind of get a little of a back stretch. But just find yourself laying down. Especially after all that we've done, all the heat that we've generated, it can feel really nice just to take a second. Now go ahead and take your feet so that your feet are planted on the ground. You want to take them about where your, your the tips of your fingers can touch your heels. And we're going to come into a bridge pose. So go ahead and lift your hips up as you reach your hands underneath, interlacing them. Take, walk your shoulders in closer to each other. Do you really press through those feet to lift those hips up? You want to make sure that you're tucking your chin to meet your chest. And then when you're ready, go ahead and separate your fingers nice and slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae, slowly coming down back onto the ground. Now coming into reclined pigeon, we're going to take one foot over cross as if we were making a figure four. Now you can stay here. Make sure that your toes are flexed. And you can always press on your knee to kind of push outwards. Now, if you want to move onwards, you can do what I'm doing on the screen and you can lift one leg up and take your fingers back behind it and pull it closer into your chest. If you want to take it even farther, you can always take it from the outside of your knee and pull that. This will feel really intense and you might have some strong emotions here and that's okay. We oftentimes hold our stress in our bottom and that's certainly what we're stretching here. And so as we try to relieve some of that um, muscle tension, we might also release some of those emotions. So just take a second to breathe here. And then go ahead and slowly release, taking both feet down back to the mat, stretching them out. Now let's do it on the other side, taking that figure four with our legs, making sure to flex both of our feet. Again, you can just press on the knee, or if you're feeling like you're ready to move on, you can always take your hands back behind the back of your knee. Make sure that your shoulders are staying firmly planted on the ground. Just breathe. We never want to hurt, but we do want to experience some of those sensations. And rather than avoiding those sensations, we want to listen to our body and hear what it's telling us. go ahead and slowly release both feet back down onto the mat. Let's go ahead and take our arms out wide. You can either stretch them out to either side or just take little angel wings if you don't have much room. And then take your knees back and forth into windshield wipers. Knees going to one side and then the other. Try to match this up with your breath. So when your knees come up to the ceiling, you're taking inhale, breath in. And then when they go down to the side, you're taking out, exhale, breath out. Going back. And forward. When you're ready, go ahead and roll over to one of your sides into a nice fetal position, into a really tight ball, and lift one of your hands up your top hand up to the sky, and then reach it over back behind you, getting a stretch through your chest. This twist not only kind of just rings out your spine, opens up your spine, it also opens up your chest. We kind of talked about that before, where a chest really can be tight, especially if we're sitting over, hunched over a computer a lot. Opening up your chest can feel really uncomfortable and feel like it's kind of completely 
pressing in. Let yourself relax into this position so that way you can just take some time to open yourself up and reverse some of those negative effects of sitting over a computer, playing video games or whatever it might be. Go ahead and roll yourself back over onto your back. Get yourself situated and then roll over into that ball position on your other side. Doing the same thing, lift your top arm up and then rainbow arc it all the way over to the other side. Again, anytime we do any twists, we do want to make sure that our spines are nice and long. So go ahead and just check that your spine is long as you're twisting all the way back. And with any stretches or any poses, we want to make sure that we're connecting our breath here. Inhales in and exhales out. Let's go ahead and roll back over onto our back. And then just to kind of get situated, let's take both knees into our chest, into a nice tight ball. And then you can either take your top half back down to the, the ground and stay there with your knees kind of pulling in, or you can take Happy Baby where you reach up and grab the outsides of both of your feet and pull those knees into your armpits. Good. And when you're ready, release those feet and we're going to come into Goddess Pose. So that's where we take our feet down to the ground, but we're going to take both of our uh, the bottoms of our feet facing in towards one another, our knees out wide. Letting our knees open. And when we're ready, go ahead and take them slowly, gently together and take your feet out wide so your knees are kind of knocked in towards another. That goddess pose and this pose are kind of opposites each to other. And yoga is all about finding that balance. We want to express ourselves, but we also want to find that balance. Just like anytime we do some higher um, heartbeat, some, some intenser practices, we should also be trying to come down into these calmer stretching out after every exercise. So finding that balance, let's go ahead and take a nice ball in, take your knees to your chest, your forehead to your knees, curl up, and then when you're ready, exhale out and coming into a savasana or a starfish pose. Legs out wide, arms out wide, just kind of finding ourselves relaxing on. Now here, we're going to kind of let our body start taking over that breath. Not worrying about taking long inhales or exhales. We're just going to try to relax on that. So as you're here, take a second to, to connect with yourself. Consider how your body's doing. Close out practice, but I encourage you to stay here in these poses, in this pose as long as you can. So take your prayer hands to your forehead because today I wish for you kind thoughts to yourself and others. And then take your prayer hands to your mouth because today I wish for you kind words to yourself and others. And then take your prayer hands to your heart. Because today I wish for you kind actions to yourself and others. Now, if you enjoyed today's practice, please go ahead and check out my Instagram. Uh, check out my other videos. I've got one other teen video up so far. I'm hoping to do some more. I've got a link to donations down, down below. So certainly check that out. But just to kind of wrap up today's practice, I just want to say namaste. Because that means peace to you. And I certainly wish more peace in this world. And yogis, 
Let your little lights shine. Nice job today.